In one of my previous videos, I showed you my Latte Panda Mini ITX GTX 1650 build. Well, here's part two, how to build it. Hey everyone, this is Project SPC, and today we'll go over how to build this little gaming setup. If you saw my previous video on this, then you're probably wondering how it all fit together. And if not, I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you can see what kind of performance you can get out of this little build. Two parts to the video, what parts you're going to need to build it, and then of course the build process itself. When we go over the parts we need, we're going to break it up into three different sections. We've got the computer parts, the case build parts, and the power supply parts. Let's go over the computer parts. I will leave links to the parts in the description below. Latte Panda Alpha, Zotac GTX 1650. If you use any other GPU, it may not work with a 3D printed interface. M.2 M key to four lane adapter. Four lane PCIe risers. I have a 10 centimeter version, which is what I originally used, but I also have a five centimeter version to see how well that fits. And lastly, but optional, is additional storage. You can use the built in EMMC, but I do have an E key to NVMe adapter and a NVMe to USB with Windows to Go installed on it. And if you're interested in this solution, I will leave a link to a video I made on this in the description below. Let's go over the case part. You're going to need the good Isery A01 Mini ITX case. There's two different versions, one with an acrylic top panel and one with an aluminum. I recommend the aluminum because of the additional vent holes you get. You're going to need some 3D printed parts, which I will leave in the description below. This bridges the gap between the Latte Panda Alpha and the GTX 1650 to the Mini ITX mounting interface. And I also printed off some plastic washers to help secure this to the case itself. You're going to need some of these male jumper cables, male to male jumper cables. This is going to set up the power button LED to the Latte Panda Alpha. And finally, we've got the 20 pin to connect the USB ports on the side to the Latte Panda itself. Last is the power supply setup. I have a 160 watt Pico PSU power supply with a jumper to enable the power supply without plugging it into a motherboard. I've got a SATA to four pin adapter to power the GPU. And I made my own cable four pin adapter to the 12 volt input on the Latte Panda Alpha. This is a JST PH 2.0 four wire adapter. And lastly, I have a 120 watt power brick. First up is installing the 3D printed interface. I've got everything removed from the mini ITX case and I've got my GPU post in that back corner. Once you get it in, it should slide nice and neatly over the mini ITX mounting holes. Next, you're gonna grab three of these little washers and install them on the little button screws. Only install these three screws. Don't install one here because it may short out the GPU. Next we're going to install the GPU and the four lane PCIe riser. You may need to push the GPU post back while you're installing this. If you're going to use the NVMe to USB adapter solution, go ahead and install that underneath the riser like so. Next, install the M key adapter on your Latte Panda Alpha and the power cable like so. In my last video, I noted that the built-in Wi-Fi antennas aren't the best inside this case. You can buy some of these larger Wi-Fi antennas that can actually mount to the back. If you're going to use those, install those now on the Wi-Fi card. I don't feel like fighting with these connectors, so I'm not going to show this for the rest of the video. Install the other end of the four lane PCIe riser into the bottom of the Latte Panda Alpha. And line up the mounting holes with the Latte Panda Alpha. Install the four screws to hold the Latte Panda Alpha to the 3D printed part. A helpful build trick, if you drop one of the screws, keep a magnet around to get them out easier. Install your USB 20 pin and carefully route that in the back of the case such that you can swing them around and have them installed 
here. If you're using the USB to NVMe adapter, go ahead and install that as well. Next, we're going to install our male jumpers. There are six wires that come off the case. We're not going to worry about the hard drive activity lights. We're just going to install them on the power for the LED and the power switch itself. Install your power for the LED on the USB 5 volt ground lines. And install your power switch jumpers here. Next, I'm going to install a protective sleeve over the Pico PSU to prevent shorts. And we're going to get it into position. I'm going to feed the incoming power to the back of the case underneath the latte panda alpha. In hindsight, I probably should have installed this before getting the latte panda alpha in. The Pico PSU I'm using uses a four pin adapter. And I've got my 5.5 millimeter barrel jack on the back. Next, work the power supply down behind the GPU like so. You may have to move some of these USB wires around to make it fit nice and snug. Make sure there's some clearance between the top of the Pico PSU and the lid so you prevent shorts. Next, we're going to wire up the Pico PSU. I've got my GPU power adapter underneath and I'm going to plug in here. And I've got my JST connector to power Latte Panda here, so I'm going to plug that in as well. Then try and get the cables up underneath where there's some extra space to get them out of the way. Now that everything's somewhat neatly tucked away, we're going to install the lid. And there you have it, your mini ITX build. I did forget a couple of things along the way. If you're using the E-Key to NVMe adapter, install that when I installed the NVMe to USB adapter. And also the 3D printed parts should be PETG or ABS because of heat warping. I do recommend PETG because it's a little bit more flexible and it makes it easier to get into the case. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, maybe subscribe, if you have any questions or comments about the build, leave them in the comments below, and thank you for watching.